that can come to you logically logic where you say okay i prayed for half an hour usually i pray for 10 minutes but this time i prayed for half an hour how can god allow this to happen so there's a logical peace i'm talking about divine peace where your spirit man that is connected to the spirit of the lord that is one with the spirit of god is testifying to you that my child right now the the fear that you have is no more required this battle is won this is your human fear now go and sleep what is the lord leading us to protect your environment if you want your spiritual life to go to places if you want to grow in spiritual stature hear me please if you want to grow in your stature your capacity you want to grow and become a spiritual giant you don't want to be a baby believer who is still fighting yang 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 crying gossiping slandering you are busy yang 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 that's all you're doing if you want to mature from that place you want to go to a place where angels and demons respect who you are because they look at you and say oh this guy back off he is the real deal he carries the fire respect of humans don't matter people of god yes you can get visible people to respect you but when the invisible can recognize you that's when you have arrived that's when you know okay now my spirit is actually growing now i am not just a believer in a church i am recognized in the spirit realm so many of our christian growth is just surface level demons are not even paying attention to many of us because just they're like ah okay this one no, no problem <laughs> this, this is, he doesn't trouble us we won't trouble him <laughs> yes that is why jesus said woe unto you if all men like you woe unto you that is what jesus said woe unto you if all men there's a problem if everybody likes you that means you're not really living your life when your spirituality starts causing some people to fight you that's when you know okay now you're getting somewhere because now you are not just making everybody happy you believe in structures you believe in principles you believe in something that is worth being fought about until then we are we're doing nothing we we cannot live in a place where our what we believe is not challenging some people and troubling some people that will cause you to fight you that will cause you to throw stones at you yes may you be recognized in the realms of the spirit in the mighty name of jesus protect your environment every environment may produce but not necessarily that environments are good for you every end environment have their own production capacity but they may not be the best I was passing by I looked into one of our neighbors and I saw an apple tree I said strange an apple tree in this backyard and I I looked it was it was a mess the backyard was a mess but there was still an apple tree hey so you can you can have a whole mess and and you can still manage to get an apple tree but the quality of the apple there will be different from the apple tree that has the right environment that is orchestrated that is preplanned that is purposed for the health of this apple tree so the the environment is very important so i want to ask you you have to you have to pause and ponder I say what kind of environment have i created physically number one physically physically what is my environment 
I want to I want to emphasize this. Physical uncleanliness is a reflection of your spiritual uncleanliness. Okay. Now before you start being worried. Okay. I'm not talking about clutter. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about every house you go, you know, with kids around. Your house has a certain um, clutter that if you spend a day, you can fix. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about, I want you to observe. Is things falling apart in your house? Is things dirty for an extended period of time? Hey, listen, I'm giving you guys some practical stuff here. Okay? I hope this is helping you. Observe it. Because there is something that happens to somebody whose spirit realm is, they're growing in the things of the spirit. And I'm telling you, these are things I don't need to prove to you. I don't need to. Like I said, I'm not feeding everybody. I feed the ones God has sent. So, if you're sent, you hear my voice and you understand. As you grow in the things of the Spirit, your taste, <laughs> even in the natural, will change. Impossible. I am telling you. Impossible. I'm not talking about 30 years being a Christian. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. There are people, there are just three months who have been a believer. <laughs> three months believer. But their spirit have grown so much in the things of the spirit. We are spirit beings. Okay. That means whether... I feel the anointing. Whether we like it or not, we are reflecting heaven on earth. Okay? I'm going slow now for you. I want you to digest it. Okay? Oh my God. The presence of God has just increased so much all of a sudden. So, when your spirit man grows... And when your spirit man is more connected to heaven than how it was in your last season, in your last life, the more deeply you are connected to heaven, more heaven will begin to reflect on earth. Okay? Okay? That means you just need to observe an individual's long-term trajectory, trajectory. And you will be able to use spiritual intelligence. You will be able to look into this individual and you are able to say how much of this person is connected into the heavenlies because 100% it will be reflected in their physical environment 100% and this is why I'm telling you <laughs> like I said you don't need to believe it but an, a, a person can be in the Lord long time and still you will see their physical environment does not change. Why? Because the amount of how much their spirit has been plugged into heaven is very less. So they've been in the Bible, but not in the heavenly. They've been in the church, 
but not connected to the things of the spirit when you begin to connect with the things of the spirit all your decision making is interrupted with the amount of data okay i hope i'm not confusing you now help me here are you with me the amount of data that is in your spirit realm will decide what your environment and how your environment will be so if you're looking at somebody for a long time there is no growth they are the same way of doing things same system say no growth in there you you have to start being worried you have to start praying for yourself you have to say god this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense because the more of heaven touching my spirit my taste bud changes my style changes my environment changes mm. okay let me give you some proof now let's say when isaiah is dressing up in a certain way his house maybe he got his house from his biological parents his hairstyle is in a certain way his everything is in a certain way the colors that he likes are in a certain way the metals that he likes are in a certain way if you look at a shelf the the what do you call the devices the 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 show pieces are in a certain way probably his mother chose him for them or his if or his family is culture and then one day isaiah chapter 9 he sees heaven with his eyes he sees the lord high and lifted up oh he sees heaven with his natural eyes his spirit is now plugged in to the full capacity of heaven he's had the the craziest encounter where a seraphim from the furnace of heaven brings a coal and touches his lips my god people of god please don't tell me that his physical environment don't won't change after that impossible 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 if he has any spiritual intelligence if he is a smart man he will look at his chair and say you know i like this chair but but i saw a chair <laughs> the corner at this kind of edge by the way i like this curtain but but i saw a color it's not blue it's not purple but a certain blend but i've seen it nobody else have seen it but i've seen it it is in my spirit and he goes searching for that he looks at the show pieces on his on his on his in his house and he says where did i get this from I don't understand <laughs> and he's he begins to add show pieces that he's never added before don't you wonder why king solomon he engraved cherubims everywhere wherever possible he engraved cherubims 
What were they doing? They were reflecting something that they were picking up from the spirit realm and they were bringing it into the natural realm. Come on. Come on. We are called to be kings and priests on earth, people of God. On earth, not in heaven. Not when we go to heaven. On earth, we are kings and priests. What does that mean? Is that something that is just a, a, a nice, cute title? You are kings and priests? Oh, oh, let's fist bump now. We are kings and priests? Come on. No. There's more to it. My God. God is doing something with this word right now. There is a divine, you are coming in touch with a divine information into your spirit. Listen to me carefully. There is a grace that is being released right now. Those who can pick it up, let them pick it up. There's a grace being released right now. I'll tell you what that is happening right now. The grace to be upgraded is coming into your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. A grace for upgrades. Now, you can't tell me you have encountered the Lord when that encounter is not changing everything around you. environment the environment so why is it that some believers have not changed it could simply be that they have not trained their senses to discern some things is, is not enough that you have a gift. That is why the Bible says their gifts, that, that discernment that is in them is trained. It is trained. It is trained. Meaning you have a gift, but that gift has to be trained. Meaning you can be exposed to God. You can be exposed to the things of God. You can be exposed to uh, a church all your life, but until somebody sits down like this and takes time to open your eyes, you're not able to access into certain realms. Look, what I'm saying is in your scripture. The Bible talks about how the eunuch, he was reading the scriptures. He was reading the Bible and he couldn't get it. To the point where you he he had to he had to go and ask Isaiah. He he was reading Isaiah, didn't have a clue of what he was saying, and he's asking Philip, who who is this guy writing about? Is he writing about himself or is he writing about Christ? So God had to send somebody that could unveil something to their eyes. And right now, I believe I told you, I can sense a grace that is being released right now. A grace to unveil certain things is coming into your spirit. Take it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May you be able to do something in your family that no other family members have done. May you be able to bring light, brightness, Glow, joy, love, understanding, clarity, order, structure, systems in your garden like nobody else has been able to in your house in the mighty name of Jesus. As I was praying, 
just by your your connecting i believe <laughs> some people are being shifted right now as i was praying i was seeing something very unique i was seeing uh, i'm not good at uh, identifying these creatures but it, it's it's a it's not a it's not like is it's like a lizard but not a lizard more like a larger lizard as we were praying i was seeing it looking like this and and just moving away just moving away just walking away as fast as possible i'm telling you there are some some creatures that have been in your environment that are just taken advantage of your ignorance that you have allowed certain certain strongholds even without your knowledge i'm telling you as this word is coming into your spirit as fresh grace is coming into your spirit some things are happening some spirits are exiting your environment right now because light is coming into your environment light something like that light is coming into your environment receive it membro kosi antana somebody open your mouth right now i'm going to help you okay get ready things are going to move within seconds things are happening kerobo shiata kababa shiata rabaya somebody just lift your voice as loud as you can take authority in your house and say i command every lizard in in hiding in my house out in the name of jesus open your mouth there are some things that have followed your house some things that have crept in that have made itself comfortable in your environment right now by the presence of the lord jesus command it out in the name of jesus raise your voice out project it let your whole house echo it in the name of jesus out in the mighty name of jesus yes oh ramaya tabo seke ne me ne me ne this is how we do <laughs> this is how we do this is how we do i some people will be feeling like a like a presence of god going from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet you will feel that you will feel it happening right now romaya ndika basi kataba rete ke bebe se karabaya it is time for you to take authority of your environment it is time for you to take authority of your environment i said it is time for you to take authority over your environment why have you allowed certain things in your house you know how how satan is always taking advantage of our weaknesses he's always taking advantage of our ignorance that's why the bible says don't give him a foothold see i was closing my eyes and i see a vision i see somebody taking a you know what's a baseball bat and just bashing and getting things out things are happening i can see you're warring right now some people are warring that's that's what you do you ride the wave when you begin to see the spirit wave is flowing you ride on it yes 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 i see somebody standing i see somebody swinging some base bats against some certain spirits out clear the environment me brokozi i command fresh paint in your house i command fresh smell in your house i command yes your whole spiritual atmosphere shift yes peace in your house receive it receive it receive it receive it everything around you shift your style shift your royalty shift order shift it is it is your yes it is your right le brokobosia le kete mokomoni antanakasia father we thank you we thank you because you're shifting people lord we thank you because you're shifting people ha ah, thank you holy spirit the blood of jesus is against you satan <laughs> wow so you have to study it's so important what i'm teaching you guys is a you know these are not elementary stuff your understanding is going to a whole different realm so you have to ask what does my environment produce what is the environment what is my environment producing right now 
what is it producing? Because if you're not careful of your environment, physical, I don't have time to go into individual details, mental, emotional, these environments, if they are not full of light, hear me? One more time. Physical, emotional, mental. If they are not full of light, okay, if they are not full of light, it unleashes a dark and slushy environment that will cause for people, it will cause uncleanliness. It will close certain spirits to come into your house. It will cause those spirits to have access into your life. I want you to start researching your environment. Like I said, don't don't just go to, don't take the shortcut of man of God, lay hands on me. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you, a man of God can lay hand on you. You go back to your old environment, all these junk spirits that left at the command of the man of God is going to come back and say, okay, but I'm back in my environment. So you cannot allow certain thoughts to house certain demons. That's the mental environment. Okay. Your mind and emotions are connected. If you your emotions are a reflection of your mental environment. Your emotional environment is the result of mental environment. Are you, are you with me? Okay. So when you start sowing, you know, the, the, the other day I woke up early in the morning with a beautiful dream. I was in the, in the dream, I was like a farmer. I was in a very rich land, rich earth. And I had dug up the whole earth. And I heard a voice. It says, sow into the land. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sowing. And I believe that is falling into the right ground. So that is our responsibility. That the earth is cleaned up. The earth is fixed up. The earth is prepared to receive the right seed. Okay. So your emotional environment is the result of your mental environment. Your mental environment has five windows. Okay. Touch, your eyes, your ears, your smell, your taste. Okay. One more time. Your emotional environment is a result of your mental environment. Your mental environment has five windows. Your human senses create the mental environment. So what you've been feeding, your mind. Certain movies has a power to hijack you. As you're watching a movie, if you feel, if you feel like you're being sucked into that movie... Stop that movie immediately because that movie is, is creating a mark in your DNA. The problem with that is that you may even forget the movie, but it has altered your DNA. Did you hear that? You may have physically forgotten the movie, but that sense that you picked up with your eyes, with your ears, has altered your DNA. It has created a certain emotion to come into your spirit. Ah, come on now. Who am I talking to? So, you get into a friendship and you don't think much about that friendship. You don't, you don't think what is wrong with that friendship. But, but your eyes, you, you feast on something that you shouldn't feast a little longer. 
that individual that you entertain is leaving a, a print on your soul. Now, have you thought of how much you have to you have to work on in order for you to flush that out of your system? Have you thought about it? How much you have to work on before your all that imprints of that individual? All you thought was, "Oh, he's such a cute guy," but it was. altering your dna it is altering that that serial i was in prayer and i was in a I was in a different realm and there was somebody that had come in at that time to to be with mama And, uh, they were in the house and i looked and the lord opened my eyes and i began to see that this person was watching a certain series that was causing their destiny to be molded they were not supposed to go into their destiny but that serial that they were watching was causing their desire to be shaped and that desire changing was going to cause this person to marry a wrong person and i was seeing whoosh their whole destiny trajectory was being changed and i said wow now if i go and tell them hey this thing that you're watching you know it's not good for you thankfully this person was humble enough to say yes god has been speaking to me but i have not been taking it seriously but this one word is now enough for me to now go and correct that situation thank god this person had that humility but i'm thinking what if this person says this is over spiritual how could this 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 is not something harmful i'm not watching anything bad but what i didn't tell this person which that person probably is watching me now is that this person would end up marrying a wrong person because of this some pains you know takes decades to correct you don't want to go there people of god your environment is everything I'm the, not don't just don't just run after men of god to lay hands on you you work on your environment work on your environment when you your environment woof when your field is ready you find the right man of god you 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 have an end, you have a moment with god i'm telling you you can be watching this video and if you're ready to receive already you're receiving <laughs> because your environment is so right that i don't even have to tell you there is somebody watching me from this country you're receiving no 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 you don't need me to catch you in the spirit you will absorb the grace of god i'm telling you i have seen that i have experienced that i'll never forget my last encounter with my man of god Ah, how anyways 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 so i want you to look into your mind and say has my mind create created a messed up emotional environment has my mind created a mess in my emotions because my mis- emotions are connected to my mind So I have to fix my my environment of my my emotions. The way I can do that is transforming my mind, renewing my mind. Stop seeing certain things, stop hearing certain things, stop going with certain people. I transform my mind that will create a better healthy emotions. 
So this is where I don't, I say you should not be, be hard on yourself. Be tough on yourself, but don't be hard on yourself. Does that help? What did I say? Be tough on yourself, but don't be hard on yourself. When you find the difference, you have found a lot. Okay. In other words, you can be reasonable that, okay, I have thrown this, 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 this getting, I've gotten into this habit for an extended period of time. So now I have to stay immersed in the word of God for an extended period of time until my every DNA, which was being adulterated, uh, it can be reversed. Yes, it can be reversed. And you can bring it out. You can bring it out. Maybe about 10 years ago, I remember reading a newspaper, Times of India, where there was a scientific research that they had stated that a smoker, an extended period when he starts smoking, the smoking starts creating its effects even in that person's DNA that can be passed on to his child. But that research was about how in an extended period of time when they start correcting the habit of not smoking, that slowly but steadily the DNA changes. And now when they get married and have a child, not necessarily they have to pass this on to their child. Okay? So that's hope. That's the natural things that we're talking about. Now I'm talking to you about the spiritual things. Now we don't need the science, science, uh, scientists to say that. We know for sure that the Bible says you can be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So what is happening is that, is that there is a transformation happening. It's being pushed and injected into your spirit. You are thinking differently. You're, you're saying, wow, yes, I think differently. I am anointed differently. I am called differently. I am purposed differently. Yes, you are in charge of your garden. You are in charge of your family. You are in charge of your house. You are in charge of your marriage. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I didn't believe I could change a lot of things in my life until I began to understand how the systems work, the structure work, how it can be passed on from a father to a father to a son, how things are happening in the spirit realm, how perspectives change, how renewal of my... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's possible and it's happening right now, even through this video. <sighs> yes. Lord is here. People of God, I'm, I'm just his servant. We are nothing without the Lord. Yes. So, so the more you give the Lord the glory, the more he will use me to bless you. Okay, don't forget. Amen. I stand by grace. Thank you, Lord. So if your breakthrough is taking time, don't worry. Don't worry. You have to keep fighting and be calm as you're fighting. Keep fighting and be calm. There, there is a reason I'm telling you this. Because talk to any warrior in the natural. They will tell you that one of the most important ways you can have victory is when you are emotionally calm. Okay? So if you see these natural fighters in the natural, they will, when there is a, a battle or when there is a, a sports competition, you will hear them thrash talking their opponent. And they will say, Ah! You are nothing or your family is nothing or they will do anything to to get them emotionally worked up so that once they are angry and emotionally engaged, now their mental preparation takes effect. Oh, I feel the anointing like crazy. Zoro See, as you keep praying, the spirit moves me. 
Mm. So, if the enemy can get you railed up in the natural, okay, emotionally railed up, then you start making decisions out of those emotions. Now, no more, no more the right decisions. Now, you, your decisions are emotionally affected. This is the same thing in the spirit realm. If the enemy can can defeat you. Okay. Oh, this is going deeper tonight. Yo, this is the reason 364 times in the Bible it said do not fear. Do not fear. I will fight for you. Do not fear. I will fight for you. Okay, so you have to ask the question Why is the Lord saying do not fear if he's going to fight like what's the problem if I if I fear like you're going to fight for me anyway so so let me be afraid and you will still fight me doesn't work that way doesn't work that way because God does not move because you're fearful he moves because of your faith it's simple the bible is clear without faith it is impossible to please god so your fear is causing god if, if without faith it is impossible to please god that means fear that displeases god simple so that means that as soon as fear comes in you already displease god okay i want you to understand this when you're fearful if god is still working then the lesson that you have learned from life is that faith does not matter i can still be afraid and everything so the prod- the end result is what you become a very fearful child that's not god's desire so god cannot okay let me give let me i'm trying to break it down uh for example I've told there's a rule in the Matthew house. I've told my kids crying gets you nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay? That's how the it's it's a, it's one of the lessons that's the hardest for them to get because it's very easy for them to let go and and you know respond out of out of it emotional and you know sometimes the human tendency is maybe if i cry hard enough i can get things so you have to remember you have to train them from that age because you are creating character you're creating character in them so you're teaching them so some of some of them you wonder they get they grow up they get married and the husband is left with somebody who he has to work on who has endless temper tantrums because that's how they grew up in their house in their house in order to get something they had to cry scream shout and they got things done so now they are married she does not know a better way she thinks if i can cry i can get things done so she starts doing that now in the same way a believer who doesn't understand how things work in the spirit realm thinks okay if i can just I love my emotions to run high. Maybe God is going to run and just just going to fix everything. Now this is where there is a father side of God that helps you when you are in when there is really no way out. Okay? For example, Peter when he was sinking. Okay, there's no way out. If the Lord doesn't help him now, that's it. He's done. he is going to drown and that's the last we are going to hear about peter so you see the lord come and rescue him okay but then you see another guy his name was elijah the man was not drowning but he's under the juniper tree saying ah i don't want to live i i want to die do you see god going up and saying hi my son come let me lift you up no 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 in fact he said you know you are my prophet uh, you're a special guy so i'm going to send you my angel he's going to feed you and he's going to say 
get up, arise and run. For the journey is great. And you're seeing him saying, I'm not going to pamper you now. Because I see how you are not understanding that there is a higher expectation from you. You cannot act like a child. So I will encourage you. I will send an angel and encourage you. But you want me to talk to you big stuff? Stuff that is important? I will not bring that, bring it down to the juniper tree. For that, you have to grow up. You have to climb up the mountain. We'll talk as adults. Matured way. There on the top of the mountain. I will speak to you. I will give you directions. I will give you strategies. I will give you plans. Because strategies are not given to emotional people. That's a bomb. Did you hear that? In order for God to release strategies, you have to have a certain level of maturity. So if you are emotionally railed up by the enemy, God has to wait now. He has to wait. He cannot hand over important stuff to babies who don't understand that, you know, Satan will never stop fighting as people of God. Satan will, some of you are waiting, ah, oh, if I can just win this battle. No, 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 no. If you win this battle, you're getting a bigger battle. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You thinking that if I can just somehow live through this one. Hey. God is looking for people and he's saying, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you to develop your maturity in this level. Because once you're mature, once you bring that rest of the spirit into your spirit. Okay. Do you remember what I taught you last Sunday? Please, if you have not seen it, start there. Start right after this, you need to go there. I, I can't. No, if you haven't seen last Sunday, you're missing something. Too much. Last two Sundays, you, you can't follow me here on a Wednesday night and tell me you haven't seen the last two Sundays. It's, I can't. I can't understand that. It's, it's, it's a journey. It is. Go and see. Go and experience. <sighs> so I was teaching you last Sunday why God trusted John with that information. If you look at him, he was he was in a place of total rest. He was not an emotional wreck. He was in a place of total rest. Thrown into the island of Patmos. Oh, get ready for next Sunday. Get ready for next Sunday, people of God. And he is at rest. That is the place where God begins to release strategies and information. So you don't find a breakthrough? Don't, don't be moved. Don't be moved. Just know who you are. And be calm. Be at rest. Because when you are calm during a battle, that is when strategies begin to come. Information begins to come. Mom and I, we were praying and the Lord began to open our eyes and we began to see certain things. And uh, I'm amazed by Pastor Tini every time. She keeps amazing me. She said, let's gather the children and let's hold our hands and let's just thank the Lord for everything. When she began to do that, information began to be released in a very high dimension. So here she is, she could she's seeing some things, we could we could respond to it emotionally. Instead, we held hands, held hands as a family and began to thank God, began to praise God. We just started telling God for all the things that He had done in the past for us. Hey. That's that's a secret. That's a secret. Emotional, emotional, when you come, when you can bring your spirit to rest, when you bring your spirit to rest, you will begin to fly higher. You will begin to solve. Now, the enemy will not use your emotions to create a bigger fight in your house. 
once you're emotionally shaken, the enemy can and can distract you, make you do more mistakes, make you do more faults, make you take wrong decisions, get you married to the wrong guy, get you go in the wrong direction. No. When you don't find a breakthrough, don't give up. Just stick up and clear your garden. Prepare your ground. Okay. This is where I find that that many people fail. They fail because they have one axe, they give one blow to the tree, and the tree didn't fall. And now they are frustrated. They don't have the capacity to say, this is a spiritual warfare. And now you're thinking, oh, what did I do wrong? Is my faith enough? Does Jesus love me? Oh, maybe, maybe this is not for me. You know, I'm not doing something right. You start going through emotional attacks. That's where many people have failed. Many people, the reason their spiritual warfare did not have victory is because in between you and your success, what the enemy will do is throw a lot of lies to upset you, to emotionally hijack you. And once you give in to that, I once you have once you have given in to that emotionally, enemy hijacks you. That's that's the end. And then you you can't have victory in that area. Even if God gives you victory, you don't believe it's a victory. You don't even know that the victory has happened because you're so hijacked in your emotions, in your mind, that you still think that there is a battle. When the battle is lost, it's like Israelites. God had given them victory. But for ages they had shut themselves down and, and, and they didn't see a victory. So even after the enemies ran away, they still sat there thinking the enemies are surrounding them. That's the, the danger of giving up too soon. So you, you take an axe and you begin to chop. Okay, the second thing that you need to be careful of is don't compare your victory with another person's victory. This is another critical reason why many spiritual warfares don't have victory in your life. Because you are comparing your victory with another person's victory. It doesn't work. Fastest way the enemy distracts people in the house of God is they are comparing their breakthrough with another brother's breakthrough. They look at another brother, he's got a new job, he's got a blessing, or he's got married, he's got a wife, he's got a child, he's got that, and immediately you start looking at yourself and say, what am I doing wrong? What is the problem with me? Why am I not being blessed? Am I not doing enough? I'm telling you, majority of, of times where people have, have shot themselves in the foot is because they compared their victory with another person's victory. Okay? If I can, if I can just trouble you a bit to help you. Let me be let me say this. They didn't do what you did. So they are not where you are. Okay? And you, you didn't do what they did. So you cannot expect to be where they are. Are you with me? So I want you to remember the reason. Many people cannot get into the full victory. Is because subconsciously they are competing inside the spirit. Yes. I don't want anything because of anything. I want it because it is the will of the Lord for me to have it. I don't want it because my brother has it. I don't want it because I saw it. I don't want it because somebody is asking me about it. What will people think? It doesn't matter what people think. Those who love you will love you. Those who hate you will hate you. That's it. It doesn't matter what they think. 
if you if you are desiring for a breakthrough you have to look at the reasoning behind it why do i want this breakthrough if it is because it is the will of god that is an area you will have a breakthrough competition in the church is a sign of incompletion in their identity you get that when you see somebody competing with their brothers it's because they feel incomplete they don't believe that they are complete in Christ why do you want to compete with man when you are complete in Christ that is why you see people oh, I'm, i'm trying to no 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 don't try to be better than them just be you just enjoy you enjoy you when you start creating your identity that will be affected by what people think about you hey i'm telling you this is the sure way it's suicidal it's suicidal so don't let lack of breakthroughs trouble you because now you're worried okay this person got breakthrough that person got a job this person got a baby this person got a car why am i no 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 it doesn't matter you have to go congratulate them you have to go take take a photo of the car this is so good this is so wonderful high five man i'm so happy for you i love you may the lord give you one, one more of this that shows that you are at rest in your spirit when you are at rest in that level that is a place where you will have great authority over demonic spirits because you got to understand demons will rattle you what demons want to do is to cause you to be rattled and cause you to be weak and i'm telling you knowing a little the little that i know about god he is not going to bless you because you are concerned that your brother has it and your sister has it and so you should have it no 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 he is not going to do that he is not going to say oh you know poor girl her ego is hurt let me bless no 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 that's not the way our our god works he works in a place of rest he knows what is good for you he knows if if giving your wife right now is going to help for you is it going to help you or is it going to hurt you he knows he he functions from tomorrow that means he's already in your tomorrow he's not going to do it because you feel bad be at rest your breakthrough will come when you begin to go into a place of rest okay let me wrap this up for you so in every situation every challenge that you're facing in every spiritual warfare that you are having i want you to gauge two things okay what kind of warfare does this require I won't, I won't go into the details again because the last few weeks I've been covering it. What kind of warfare? In other words, remember what I told you? Every door cannot use the same key. So prayer is one key. You can't keep using the same key for every door. So you have to learn the different keys in the scripture. Go searching for it and you have to ask yourself, okay, for this situation, this challenge, what kind of warfare is needed to get this victory okay i'm going to give you a second one but if i give you a second one you have to promise me not to ask me more about it because that is for next week okay that is for next week the second thing that you need to gauge every situation that you're facing is what is the timeline okay what is the timeline required for this victory first thing is what key okay second is what is the timeline because remember the example i gave you some people have one axe they give two blows three five blows at this tree and they don't see this huge 100 year old tree falling and then they are destroyed by it 
they start giving up. They start doubting God. They start questioning God. They feel depressed. They go back into their life of sin. Why? Because hundred-year-old tree, they wanted to destroy it in two seconds. There are people who are anointed to break it in two seconds, but are you that person? So do you have the humility to say, every battle has a timeline. Every battle. If these are things that you don't understand, you'll come to the pastor next week, oh, pastor, pray for me, pray for me. And then you think, ah, oh, pastor is not anointed. Yay. <laughs> Timelines. Timelines. Okay, I'll give you one more and we'll, we'll conclude. Do you understand why? I'll, I'll open up for questions after this. Do you understand why the Bible says, stay under the mighty hand of God? that he may lift you up in due time. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. Okay. I'm reading from the ESV version. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. What is the proper time? The proper time is the time period that is required for you to for you to overcome the enemy that is hindering you from your destiny okay so in that time period i remember i prophesied to somebody i said i see this date i see this time until that time stay rooted stay humble work on yourself why because until that period there is a warfare against your character, against your heart, against making your emotions unstable, against, you know, causing you to just fear. So in that season, that appointed time is given to you. You have to stay under the mighty hand of God until the character of the Lord, He begins to abide in you. He works on you. He strengthens your mind. He strengthens your capacity. He strengthens your emotion. So what you're doing is you are essentially building your foundation. Listen, I don't know, why do I feel like I, uh, I'm bringing you stuff that doesn't get the best amen and hallelujah? It's okay. Long term, you will be grateful. But uh, this is the truth. Victory is not important right now as much as your foundation. <laughs> Can you imagine? God gives you a, an amazing house, but you have no foundation to keep that house on. God gives you an amazing wife, but you've not built your foundation right. Many people are married now and no foundation. And you're... You're now working on communication. Now you're working on foundation. Now you're working on, oh my God, is it too late? Not at all. Not at all. It's better now than never. Okay? So foundation. So enjoy these, these teachings. This is not to discourage you. Build a foundation. Stay under the mighty hand of until it's due time. How is that time coming to you? Just the more you're transformed, the faster the time comes to you. One more time. The more you're transformed in your heart, in your character, in your spirit, in your environment, you make changes, you fix things, you bring order, you bring structure. The more you're transformed, the more you will begin to bear much fruit. <laughs>